Hey YouTube, I wanted to make a video on how to render OBJ files within Minecraft 1.8.9 using Blender, and not just render, but to also texture them. So, I ended up spending around three days trying to figure this out, searching all through minecraftforums.net and Minecraft Forge. Maybe found around eight forum posts entirely, and then all of those posts combined still didn't help me. All they did was leave me questioning how to end up doing what came in the beginning, what came in the end. Really, everyone just got to the middle and then said, hey, I have this problem here. I'm in the middle of the whole process. How do I fix this part right here and just this? What ends up happening? You don't know how to do any of the rest. So, after three days, I finally figured it out. And I figured, since there's no real good in-depth tutorial anywhere on the internet on how to do this, figure I'd make a YouTube video for all of you that way you don't have to end up spending three days figuring this out let's start with the code first here I have a simple example mod that Forge set up initially for me I created a simple proxy client proxy and common proxy and I set up a test block and test item so let's start from within the main mod file from within the main mod file you want to have the FML pre initialization event set up that's the most important one. Within here, you want to register your items and blocks first. Go ahead and get those out of the way. That way we don't have to worry about any kind of ordering issues. As far as I know, register your items and blocks first. Then, within your client pro proxies pre-init, call objloader.instance.addDomain and then your mod ID. You have to call this an FML pre-initialization event. If you don't, it just won't work. After that, in your initialization event, you want to call minecraft.getMinecraft.getRenderItem. I made a variable for simplicity's sake. So, from with that variable, you want to call getItemModelMesher.register. The first parameter is an item. If you're using a block, call item.getItemFromBlock and then that block. Once you do that, the next parameter is usually and typically always zero. I always use zero. That's all I've seen and that's what works. Then, after that, call new model resource location mod ID plus colon plus the name of the blocker item comma the last parameter is string inventory so and even if you have an item like I said you don't call item dot get item from block you just use the items instance alright that's all the code one last thing if you're doing blocks you want to make sure you have these three methods set up within here don't ask me why they just work I know how they work but I'm not going in depth on how they work just know that that's what you need Within test item, I really have nothing. It's just a blank item. Now, getting to the nitty gritty. What these actually point to, this example mod ID colon, points to assets mod ID dot block states dot whatever name is this. So test blocks name, if you look, it's just test block like that. Well, there's test block dot JSON. So that's all that is. So all that's pointing to is this file within block states. And even items need one inside the block states. I know that sounds weird, but the items also go through the block states. This is how Minecraft reads models now. It's all everything, items and blocks have a JSON file within block states. So I never understood JSONs. I still kind of don't. I don't understand all of the tags that they can have, but I do know that these the JSONs I include in the download link will work for your for your blocks and items. Just copy and paste exactly what I have, and then what you, the only thing, the only line you're going to want to change is the model line. You want to change that to your mod ID, and then the model name .obj. It's all you want to do, okay? And both of these, and these go in your block states, and these must be whatever name you put up here in the client proxies render item uh, register. But then here you have the transform in first person, third person GUI. All this is doing is translation means on the X, Y, and Z axis, so moving it up, down, left, right, rotating it, and then scaling how big it is. This is so you can perfect the look of your model within each perspective of Minecraft, albeit first person, third person, or GUI. Alright? Okay, that's, that's really all there is to that, and that's all there is to the JSONs. Just change the model and change each of these translation rotations and scales to whatever you see fit. Now let's get on to the actual modeling. I'm going to include a test model within the download or within the description box to download. But if you're just starting from blank brand new model, here's what you want to do. 
you want to go you want to click on the block you want to go up here to whatever view this is I still don't fully understand blender I actually learned blender within, within one day to be able to do this so trust me this isn't that hard you want to click that little cube shape up here in the top right and then you want to put 0 0.5 and all these for scale so 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay and then within location you want to put 0 0.5 and the middle one negative 0 0.5 and then on the bottom one 0 0.5 Okay, this right here is a default Minecraft block. It's exactly, oh, don't want to move it. This is exactly where a Minecraft block will go. Um, this one's actually, okay, that's not exactly correct. Oh, I don't know what happened there. It changed. There we go. Okay, that wasn't 0.5. So, this is what I will include within the download link. And then you can shape this to whatever you want. So, for my purposes, I, for this tutorial, actually, sorry, I don't want this I want a pyramid so I'm going to delete this alright guys so once you have your shape done so this is my pyramid uh, nice looking pyramid as you can see all good to go so now what do you do in order to actually texture it you want to go down here and go from it will be on object mode you want to go to edit mode once you're in edit mode you want to go over here there will be three down here vertex select Edge select and face select. Click on edge select. Once you do that, click or press A. Once you press A, you want to hold Control and E together. Click mark seam. Once you click mark seam, you want to go down and you want to click faces. It's next to edges. Once you click face select, you want to click U and click unwrap. All right. Now you've unwrapped it. Now go up here next to where it says default view drop down to either if you already have one saved use that but I'm gonna go to UV editing because everyone will have that if you look to the left that is all of our sides to our triangle now I wanna make it a little more I guess easy to read for me so what I'm gonna do well first off you wanna go down here to the bottom right of this window and select the one over here where it says UV selection display mode island island selection mode you definitely want that uh, it's just an easier way to move these around. So now I'm going to select one by right clicking and hold it clicking G and moving it. And now I can move it. Now, say I want to be able to see actually what. Um, let me see. Obviously, this is the bottom piece. So we can leave the bottom. We'll leave the bottom like down here. But in order to see which side I have selected, I'm going to click on a side and I can see that side. Uh, I don't know what what you'd call that. I guess there is no front really to this. I guess there's two front sides, considering it's a horse, it's a diagonal pyramid. It's not exactly it's a diamond within a Minecraft block. So whatever you, whichever way you want to look at that. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to move this. Um, I guess I can move it like right here, uh, or right right here. Okay, and then I'm going to select this one, since that one's next to it. I'm going to move this one maybe over here and if I select both of them I can see and I can just select this one over here in the texturing and move this over so then I can see it alright so now we see that um, that's going to be the other side of the triangle but here's my dilemma that's still a little confusing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to rotate it perfectly so that it lines up with this Once you have your 
uh, texture lined up the way you want it and you have your pyramid, you have your model, whatever it is, probably won't be a pyramid, once you have your model, you have your textures all lined up uh, the best that you can. You want to go down to UVs, go to export UV layout and I'm going to export mine to the desktop and I'm just going to call it pyramid and I'm going to export it. All right. Now, once that's exported, you're going to want to open your favorite um, image editor. I only have uh, Pixelmator for now for this video because I do all my texturing on a Mac or on a Windows PC. So uh, we'll just use this for here. All right. Open existing image. I highly suggest Pixelmator if you're on a Mac. It's very good. It's pyramid. All right, so here's our pyramid. As you can see, faintly, is what we had going on. And now that we want to see our texture, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the default view. We're going to go up here at the very top, click Cycles Render. Once we're in Cycles Render, we're going to go to a material here, click a new material. It's going to go into Diffuse, BS, and DF. Perfect. Everything's easy done there. Now what we want to do is we want to go into up here, we're going to go into Compositing. That's going to pull this window up up here. It's going to pull everything up really that we need to texture, but I like seeing my model a little bigger uh, whenever I'm actually modeling it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here to this window, which how you do that is you click this little material circle down here in the bottom left. Once we're done that, we're going to click Add. We're going to go to Texture, and we're going to go to Image Texture. We're going to just drop that up here right next to this. We're going to go to Open. We're going to go to Desktop. And we're going to go to Pyramid Texture. And we're going to link these together. Then, if we go down here and we go to object mode and then we go to material, as you can see, our texture is working. Now, everything's said and done. We're going to go to file, we're going to go to export, we're going to go to wavefront.obj. Go down to triangulate faces and make sure that's clicked. Once you're done with that, you want to call this something. I'm going to call this pyramid.obj. I'm going to click export obj. Now, if we look, I have my pyramid.obj and I have my pyramid.mtl. We're going to go back into IntelliJ and then we're going to drag and drop these into IntelliJ. right into models so these are going to go into models and then if you're doing an item so test item the models are going to go into the item directory if you're doing a block it's going to go in the block directory I just dropped those in there okay alright so there's that and then um, that's, that's pretty much it for that the next thing you want to do, want to, going to, want to do is uh, in your MTL you're going to want to add this to the bottom. Map underscore KD, your mod ID, and then the texture. So it'll be in assets.modid.textures.blocks, items, block, item, whatever you have. So we're going to want to put our texture in there. So I'm going to do pyramid texture. 
and I'm going to move my pyramid texture into block. And it's going to be block pyramid underscore texture. Now it's going to load the texture for the block. All right, as you can see, here they are. My pyramid. There's the pyramid. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video helped you figure out how to render OBJ uh, models in Minecraft 1.8.9. Thank you so much for watching.